Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I have refilmed this introduction because this should have been Thursday's video and because I was having technical issues I had to swap them around so I thought I would kind of reintroduce this. Recently I have been starting to catalogue my completed colouring pages which are going to go onto the website in hopefully the not too distant future and while I was looking through them I was really urging to colour something sort of quick and dirty. <laughs> so today's picture that we're going to colour is from Intricate Ink by Tim Jeffs and because of the recent scroller box challenge to draw your spirit animal, mine was an owl and there is a beautiful owl drawing in Tim Jeffs book so we're going to give that a go today and I thought we'd switch up some pencils as well so we're going to be using black widow pencils today so we're going to go to top down view and we can get going on our owly friend. Woohoo! Let's get going. So this is the book in question. This is Intricate Ink, Animals in Detail by Tim Jeffs, who is a very, very talented artist. There are subsequent volumes of these books now. This is the original one. I think there's probably four or five now, actually. I'll need to have a, have a check on that. But I absolutely love this book. And the images are really, really high quality. One of the things I love about this book is the fact that these images are more or less grayscale. So it doesn't take a huge amount of time to colour them in and you get really, really good results, even if you don't want to use lots of layering and blending techniques. So I'm just going to find my little friend somewhere. Here he is. So this is who we're coloring in. Who, 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 get it? Oh, that's terrible. This is who we're coloring in today, and he is a greater horned owl. Now I did look up several reference images, just did a little bit of Googling because it's not a species I'm familiar with. And there seem to be quite a range of colors that these come in. And I don't know whether it's the males and females or it's just different subspecies. But I found one who has quite a lot of ginger in it. So I thought that would be a nice route to take, try and get some nice deep reds and things on the go there. Every single picture I looked at though, they, they look severely pissed off. Like, <laughs> I think it's the shape of this brow. They look as if they're like permanently skeptical. So uh, that's quite amusing in itself. So if you want to give yourself a chuckle, go and look up greater horned owls on, on Google. It'll give you a giggle, I promise. Now, one of the nice things about the Black Widow pencils is they brought out the skin tone sets and I personally would refer to them as earth tones rather than skin tones. And they have a lot of nice browny, beigey type colours, which is going to come in really handy when we get to work on this little fellow here. I'm going to start with his eyes. When I'm drawing as well as colouring something like this, I, I do tend to start with the eyes because it's a sort of like a defining feature. So I just felt like that was a good place to start. I'm absolutely in love with this drawing. Like I can't, I can't get over this. I really, really enjoy it. So I do have, unfortunately, all of my Black Widow swatches are not in my swatch book. They're kind of all on random bits of paper just because I, I got sets at different times and things from different people. And a lot of these pencils have been gifted to me by you guys. So to those of you who have sent me some of these pencils, thank you very much because without that, this video wouldn't be happening. So the eye colors are quite interesting. Obviously owls have rather large eyes and there seems to be quite a lot of variation in color within the, the colored part, the iris of the eye. So I don't just want to stick to one colour, although that will look amazing and you'll see that when I put down the first layer, layer of colour. We want to make it as interesting as possible. So I'm going to start pale and the colour I've picked out is Pastel Lemon and that is in the Scorpion set. And I do have these in the pencil case. I've got all the Black Widows together, but they are grouped by set, not by colour. And I just, for some reason, that seems to equate better in my brain. I don't know why, that's just the way it works. So if we start with this pastel lemon, which is, uh, it's a very, very pale shade and it's got a very slight hint of green in it and that I'm kind of going in that greeny direction. So that's gonna make a good base layer. And see, this is one of the really nice things about grayscale images like this. If you want to make it a super quick colouring page, you can literally just block colour what's there. Now, when I say block colour, for those of you that are a little bit newer to this, that is using one coloured pencil and using the same pressure and that one pencil 
in one area all the way across so really simple colouring but because these grey patches have already been filled in you're already getting that depth as if, as if someone shaded it with a graphite pencil for you and I'm quite interested to find out how these pencils behave on this paper because I haven't used the Black Widows a huge amount. I do tend to default to my polychromos or sometimes my Prismacolors. So I'm quite uh, interested to find out how we're going to get on today. But you can see there, look, look how quickly we're covering that area. And if I left this part of the page just with these pencils on, it doesn't look unfinished in any way, shape or form. See, we want to get a little bit of richer colour involved and you know get get something fruity going on. <laughs> the next colour I've picked out is from the Cobra range and it is the pencil of the same name and it's a weird kind of goldy greeny colour. It reminds me of the green gold pencil in the Polychromos set that kind of gives me that vibe. So we're going to use this just to start building things up a little bit. So we can see from where the reflection is in the eye, we know roughly where the paler parts are going to be and it would seem to be that the light source is quite sort of square on here because our owl is looking this way and you can see this highlight here and there is a bit of a highlight there as well. And having the, the darker parts that are filled in you know, in the grayscale, that, that's like a pointer to show you where you should be putting down your darker colours if that's what you want to do. And I'm going to keep a really light hand throughout this entire process and just build up some layers. The, the paper does have a tiny bit of texture, it's not much though, and I would say you could probably get away with colouring these with markers. It's not something that I've tried, but I would be quite interested to find out how that would go so maybe that's another video if that's something you would be interested in seeing you can let me know in the comments and I shall certainly oblige. I just love the expression on his face. He does have a friend over the page. There is a, another example of the same species of owl on the previous page and he looks really grumpy. <laughs> I'm also going to add in a more sort of orangey type colour so this is again from the Scorpion set and that is tanned. And I noticed that quite a lot of these birds have got little sort of orange flecks and they're not always that noticeable unless you know you're looking really closely. And I want to bring in quite a strong green as well. Now we, we have lots to choose from in that sense. There's one called Lime Fruit. Again, that's a scorpion pencil, so let's see if you can dig it out, yep. And that's really gonna give us some vibrancy and just make the, the green that little bit greener. Try and stick to the outside with that. And then I'm just going to back with this pastel lemon and I'm just going to try and sort of blend this all together now. And that should give us a bit of a richer eyeball. <laughs> I'm all about the eyeballs. It does look a little bit more delicate on camera than it does to the, the naked eye. I have mentioned this before, it's just to do with the, the light balance in the camera with the white. So things tend to look, not washed out, that's a bit extreme, but they do look slightly paler on camera. And quite a few people have mentioned it when I, when I do my, my sort of passing over with the camera at the end, I do that with my mobile phone camera just because it's easier to handle and the colours tend to show up a bit more true on that and also if I take a photograph put it on Instagram which I will be doing you can check out my Instagram if you haven't wandered over there at any point yet. So we're going to move down around his face now so I'm going to work on these areas here and these tend to be much darker than the tufts around the beak. So this is one of my favourite pencils in the Black Widow set and it's from the original Spider set and it's called Stink Bug and that's why I love it because it's got a really cool name. And we can use this for a base layer. Now these areas around the tops of his eyes are pretty pale, you know, they're quite sort of white. So we want to try and avoid those. Just start with this really lightly. And Mr. Jeffs does have a lot of texture in his drawings. You know, he leaves in a lot of pencil lines to show where the fur and the feathers, you know, what direction they're flowing in. And I find that really helpful because when you're colouring in pencil, you can keep your pencil strokes going in the same direction. And that just helps to sort of bring along that idea that, you know, it's going to bring it to life sort of thing. This pencil seems to be going down okay on here as well, on this paper. So this is me, I'm really just placing this to map out where I want this group of colours to go, you know, this sort of reddy, orangey type, brownie type <laughs> colour scheme. 
And for building up the different colours in this area, I've got three other pencils as well. I From the Cobra set, I've got Rattlesnake and Chestnut. And from the Skin Tone set, I have Cinnamon. 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 <laughs> I want to do this as kind of like a fleck. So I'm going to start with Rattlesnake because that's the, the sort of lightest one. And I'm not going to start on this, I should really start on this. Side. And again, I just want to follow the lines that Mr. Jeffs has left us. And we're just going to build these up in a, as a series of flicks, basically. And we can start using the other two colours as well. I'm going to go back to stink bug now. And you can see that's starting to make that look a little bit richer. Starting to get a bit of colour about him, doesn't he look lovely? I've got to try and get this little bit down here to, ma to match everything else as well. Well, again, I'll just do the same thing and I'm just taking my time and trying to build this up. You know, so it looks sensible and kind of joined up. So there's no crazy techniques going on here. There's nothing complicated. It's literally just flicky lines. Keeping a light pressure and that lets you build it up exactly to, you know, where you want it to be. And that's the really nice thing about colouring and it's one of the things I always talk about. You can always add more. So you can do if you, you know, you can do what you think right and then leave it and you can come back to it later. And if you decide it's not enough, well, you can go back in and you can add some more. So move over here to his other side now and see what we can get done here. So again, I'll start with the rattlesnake over the top of my stink bug. And you've got a few kind of complicated wee spaces here because we've got this tuft poking out. Having to be a bit more careful with my pencil when I'm going around there, you know. My flicks have to be less wayward, basically. I've just had to go and shut the, jo the door. Mama Jem's here. Uh, so is Papa Jem. He's here too. They are here just for a week. And most of you will know that they were here for a long time <laughs> during lockdown. And now that it's eased a bit, they can move about a little bit more. But Papa Jem is actually here doing some work. Uh, he's doing some mechanic work, fixing some tractors and things, so... Uh, Mama Jem has just disappeared off through and she's FaceTiming my grandmother. My grandmother, who's 97, has her own iPad and she frequently uses Facebook and FaceTime and a variety of other things. So that's pretty awesome. But I mean, she can keep in touch. And, you know, she's, she speaks to, to mum every day and because they can FaceTime, it's nice because she doesn't feel so isolated. You know, just because she's got that face-to-face -face contact. So that that's what uh, Mama James doing just now. I say they, I can hear them yabbering away. So I thought I'd better shut the door. <laughs> I'm sure you guys don't want to hear their conversation as well. Oh, you might. I don't know. I love owls. I really do. After doing the the spirit animal scroller challenge, I did um, go that particular evening back out to the shed because we have a a resident owl that I ju I'm just fascinated by him, I really am. He just sits and looks at you, but he seems very, very calm and very wise. And uh, this that really made me want to colour this. Much as I'm enjoying our little trip through our page in Dromenwanger with all the gnomes and everything, this, um, I feel as if I haven't, because we, I think we've all, all of us that colour, we have so many books. And I get the feeling sometimes that I'm abandoning some of them if I haven't coloured in them in a really long time. And I haven't coloured in this book for such a long time. And it's a shame because I love the images in here. Okay, that's looking reasonable to me. Again, I may come back to these. I'm keeping all the pencils out. Like the colours I've used for the eyes, they're still sitting just up and above this in case I want to come back and add in a little bit more. So there's quite a lot of white on the head and it's the paler browns you know from here that are up here as well again i'm just i've been looking at like four or five images where there's the this sort of red coloring so i think i'll go back with my stink bug and i'll maybe just do these ear parts first or horns or whatever they're called i don't know if they're called horns or not i can't really remember but we 
can get some of that going. And this part is quite pale, so I think I'm going to leave it as it is. But we'll get some stink bug down here first. And then take the palest of these sort of reddish browns, which was the rattlesnake. And maybe just pop some of that in. And there seems to be quite a lot of pale brown. I'm just flicking through my photos here. Yeah, and it's more like a sort of going into like a biscuit colour. So I think from stink bug, maybe into honeycomb in the scorpion set. That is quite pale, but I'm planning going back over this with the stink bug. The stink bug. You can see it's just leaving like a hint of colour there. But we'll get this down first. I think I'm going to use this quite sparingly. I don't think I'm going to have it absolutely everywhere. We'll see. I do want it in along this line, the grumpy brow line, and it's just so that we've got contrast between these parts that are supposed to be white and this sort of top part of his head. Is, I suppose you would call that his forehead, wouldn't you? Again, really light pressure. I'm just kind of like letting the pencil go over the paper. And I think I'll go another one down. So I'll go to the chestnut. So if I can find it. There we go. And I'll maybe just add in some flecks of that. Yeah, that, cause that makes it a little bit more uniform. Like it's starting to tie in with what's going on down here. So I'll just... Um, Again, not, maybe not over the whole thing, but just to add in some accents. So with this part here, I just want to take away some of the whiteness of the paper, you know, the starkness of it, because they are not absolutely snow white. So I've just got this, this honeycomb pencil again, which is one I've already used. And I just want to kind of soften out some of this white. And I want to take the light mocha from the skin colour set and just do the same thing. So this is all just like little flicky motions. And some of these hairs are actually quite pronounced because of the difference in colour because there's black ones in with it as well. <laughs> this little bit down here, these little tufts. Yeah, okay, quite happy with that. Now on the beak as well, I don't. I want to try and preserve this highlight, but I don't want it to be as stark as that. And it it almost looks as if it's going into like a dark blue. So I'm looking for a sort of indigo type color. And the only thing I've really got that comes close is Zephyr Blue, and that is in the original Spider set. So I'm going to do this very cautiously, but I just want to pull up some of this in from the, where the black starts to turn into grey. And it just, it adds a bit of interest to the picture as well, even if it's not completely accurate. I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that, to be honest, because it's a colouring page and this is meant to be fun. And I'm just very gently feathering that into this highlighted area. So you're still getting some variation in colour down. You know, it doesn't all have to be brown. just do this very gradually very gently and you can stop and take a look and see what you think and if you think it needs a bit more you go back in so I think that's enough you know you've still got that highlight there it's still quite prominent so that's uh, that's exactly what we want now this little dude he's looking pretty red around these parts again I've looked at a couple of pictures because they are, you know, their their heads swivel round quite considerably. So there's lots of pictures of these types of owls at different angles. So I'm just kind of picking and choosing. So, you know, I'm kind of like making up my own version here based on what I can find. So on this occasion, I'm going to start with the cinnamon. There, there is a slightly different pattern around here. So I'm going to keep that lighter. But the bulk of his head in this sort of back section... I want to be just a little bit darker. So I'm going to bring that right down here. I've got Jock in the cave with me today. Jock is our oldest collie 
and he he's the middle oldest dog but he's the oldest collie and he's got his head squished up against the armchair and he's snoring so I don't, I don't know whether you'll be able to hear that or not but it's uh, it's quite entertaining he's getting to that age where his snoring's becoming a, a lot more prominent shall we say I'll get this rattlesnake now as well I, I would laugh if you can actually hear him it's getting quite loud so you can see what I'm saying as I go along with these sections. If you were just to block colour and go one colour, it's still going to look amazing. It's still going to look really, really good. But if you want to, if you want to just take it that one step further, then you can get really nice, satisfying results perfectly without having to spend days and days colouring the same thing. And I'm just going to put a light layer of this over. I'm kind of almost using this to blend, I suppose. So you can see that although I've used the same pencils, it's producing quite a different outcome. And it's just the order and how much of each pencil I've actually used. And that's really good for things like this because it gives you that variation without, you know, taking away from the uniformity of the fact that it belongs to, you know, the same animal. So with this part, and perhaps down here as well. I think I'm going to stick to what's going on up here. And again, my pencil lines are just going in the direction that Tim's lines have gone in. That actually might just be enough, you know, I might be quite happy with just leaving it like that and do the same round here. It's literally just back and forth with this honeycomb pencil. Take out some of that sort of stark whiteness. I need some in here as well, I think. And I'm going to bring my stink bug because th this is quite a complicated little area here and I feel as if the, all the feathers are like kind of like crumpled up, like they're squished up. As if the, the owl's sort of squishing his head into his shoulders. Quite a sort of tightly packed area. I'll maybe pop a wee bit of cinnamon in here. So if I zoom out a little bit now, you can see he's coming along quite nicely. He's looking fairly good. My issue with this picture is the bottom half of the picture you can't really tell what's a wing and what's body it just all seems to be like one area so I'm going to use my imagination a little bit more and be a little bit more resourceful but I think there might be a line here somewhere one of these creases might indicate the you know a, a wing section or I'm not entirely sure but just looking at what I've done here I'm going to kind of like try and follow the same pattern if that makes sense made sense in my head so we'll get our rattlesnake on the go and again I imagine that this part in here would be quite dark you know where the head meets the body so just this tiny little section in here I'm going to make this quite dark and again it's just so I've got that definition and a bit of a separation so that we can see that we have separate parts of the body so in my head I know now that's where that's where his head stops and his body starts so I'm going to use the side of my pencil for this so that I can cover a larger area as well. I'll just get this down. Oh, that might be the wing crease in there actually. Oh, see, this is complicated. Okay, this this part has been made tar darker by Tim, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mimic that and I'm going to pop that in there. Yeah, that looks more like a wing crease to me. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> oh my. I'll go back in with my rattlesnake here as well. I'm not sure as I'm doing this because there's so much pattern on the paper. I'm not entirely sure if these pencils are a perfect fit for this paper. But they seem to be doing a reasonably good job. And I'm still just jumping back and forth between the cinnamon and the rattlesnake here. I've not added in anything else yet. My goodness, this is a busy place today. Mr. Jem is outside with two, one of the boys. I think they're trying to move a cow. We are calving cows just now. And Mr. Jem doesn't normally do things like this. She's usually busy being the boss. Clearly not today. I was out moving cows earlier on with the boys. They needed a hand. Right, so I'm going to grab stink bug now. And just use it to sort of blend all this together. I do feel that this looks a little bit too patchy, so I think I want to go back in. I'll probably go in with the rattlesnake if I'm honest. And again, I think I'll use the side of my pencil. Where I've laid down the pencil, it just looks a bit sort of patchworky. 
So I want to try and blend that out a little bit and make that, you know, transition a bit smoother. Bring this up to this sort of shoulder area now. Assuming that that's where his shoulder, <laughs> shoulder is, it may or may not be the case. And then I'm just going to add in a bit more cinnamon here as well. Now I'm just doing this by eye now, I'm not looking at my reference photos. I almost want to make with like a paler belly part here as well, which I didn't really think about earlier. I'm not really sure that that's a thing. It's kind of hard to judge which way he's facing, like just because his head's facing in that direction doesn't mean that this is the front of his body. This could be just his wings at the back and he's turned his head, you know, like almost all the way around. That is a distinct possibility that I didn't think of. Hmm. I could be wasting my time here. <laughs> anyway, we'll, I think we'll just continue from right to left here and see how it goes. So I'm starting to pay attention now to where the darker grayscale areas are and that's where I'm going to add in this cinnamon. And I'm just going to do this section by section. Because these are almost like folds, these are obviously parts of the wing, I'm hoping. We seem to have this darker section, like a bib around here. And some of them have seem to have like almost like a tiger print. There's like streaks of white in here as well. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to incorporate that, but I think I should maybe keep that in this middle section and try and g give this little guy some shape. I'm not entirely sure. Like maybe stop the, this color about here. And then if I take my stink bug, I see again this seems to be folds here as well. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure about this if I'm honest. But I just want to see how what this is gonna look like if I start to sort of join it up over here. Because it is a very sort of tiger print-esque pattern that they have. Yeah, I've decided that this is gonna work for me, so I'm gonna try and take out just this section here. I'm gonna try and take out some of my honeycomb. with my battery eraser here to get my little brush out. This is just a cheap makeup brush and I like the, how stiff the bristles were and it's really good for getting rid of your eraser shavings but also if you're using pencils like Prismacolors that are quite crumbly it's good for getting rid of those without mashing it into the paper and leaving multicoloured flecks everywhere. So it's something that's handy. It's not an essential, but it's, you know, it's handy to have on hand as it were. Uh, okay, back to stink bug. Let's see if we can get in a few more of these little sections. Um, there does seem to be a pattern to them, but I don't want it to be very regimented because it might end up like looking like he's wearing some sort of stripy pajamas or something. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm maybe going to take my crease line here along here uh, and, and make this part the same colour as this part. So keep my stripes here just now. Try and keep this light over these highlighted areas and we can add in some stink bug. We can layer this up with stink bug. Yeah, so that's going to be my defining line there. So I'm pressing a little bit harder here. And just sort of create this into some sort of shadowed area. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with this so far. Still not entirely sure about this central section, but I'm just I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with it. Now we've come this far and we are nearly done, so yeah, I think we'll just uh, we'll just roll with that and see, <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> but this is what these are all about, I think. You know, you've got the freedom to try things out and see what works and what doesn't. And uh, if it doesn't, well, you know not to do it again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take the, uh, I think I better go with rattlesnake. We'll keep the cinnamon out of the equation. And I want to fill in some of these little spaces just with the cinnamon. Try and get away from that stripy pyjama look, you know. <laughs> 
So I'm going into a medium pressure here because I don't really want to have to build up an awful lot of layers or else I'll be here for for the next millennium doing this, which I'd rather I'd rather not do to be perfectly <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So I'm kind of I'm halfway between uniformity and randomness here as I try to pick out some areas that may be white, some areas that may be brown, and some areas that may be this stink bug yellowy colour. So yeah. I'm sitting here as I'm doing this, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, if this is taking me this amount of time to fill in these gaps with my coloured pencil, I can only begin to imagine how long Mr. Jeff's sat and actually, because these are all like individual downward pencil strokes, these black parts. So that, you know, that's not a two second job. And I, I know about timescales for things like this from drawing fur in and my, my doggo draws, you know, my dog portraits that I like to do in my spare time. And I do them all in graphite. So I am, I am aware of how, of how much time it takes to put in these little texture marks, but this is uh, this is quite an, an undertaking, I feel. <laughs> I just love his artwork and I do pick a lot of my colouring books because I like the artwork rather than oh that's something I'd like to colour which I don't know whether that's odd or not uh, maybe it's just me if you have uh, the same preference I would be interested to hear from you in the comments because I, I often wonder that you know maybe it's just the way my brain works or maybe I uh, it's perfectly normal and lots of people do that but I don't you know a lot of people always say oh well what do you like to colour and for me it's not about what I like to colour it's what I like to look at and then I'll deal with the colouring. <laughs> I, uh, I think I'm actually quite happy with this as it is. He's come to life. Now if I just flip over and show you the other owl picture just so you get an idea of you know what, what's going on here and you can see the difference in them but his drawings are so good and it's so easy to bring them to life so there's one in the grey scale and it's just like da da and all of a sudden it looks like a live animal and I just love that about these books so if you're looking for something that's quite quick to colour I mean this has taken me under an hour and this is quite a detailed picture so you've coloured a full page under an hour and I am very satisfied with the results particularly the eyes because I just think they look awesome so I would love to hear your thoughts on this and if you have a favourite type of pencil to use in this book I'd also like to hear from you as well so get down into the comments section also if you've made it that far to the end of the video like this if you could leave me a thumbs up that would be amazing as well I would be really really helpful and I would love you all forever not that I don't anyway so thank you very much for joining me today and we shall see you back in the cave soon for another video have a good day everyone and bye bye for now